Welcome to the St. George Dinosaur Discovery Site. The museum you're about to explore is built around one of the most important and fascinating dinosaur track sites anywhere in the world. The stone floor of this museum was actually deposited here in the early Jurassic period, around 200 million years ago, as sand and clay were deposited along the shoreline of an ancient lake. Paleontologists have named this prehistoric lake deposit Lake Dixie. This important fossil site was discovered in the year 2000 by Dr. Sheldon Johnson, a local optometrist, when he was leveling out a hill on his property. As Dr. Johnson turned over slabs of rock on his land, he was surprised to discover incredibly detailed footprints and natural casts of footprints left by the feet of dinosaurs. The rocks here record a dramatic change in the environment toward the beginning of the history of dinosaurs. Each of these distinct rock formations were formed over millions of years as layers of sediment were deposited by swamps, rivers and lakes, floodplains, and desert sand dunes. In the late Triassic Chinle Formation, the first small dinosaurs eked out an existence in a world dominated by various other strange ancient creatures that were distinct from dinosaurs. Moving up into the early Jurassic Monave and Cayenta formations, the climate became drier and more seasonal, but the fossil tracks preserved in these formations show us that dinosaurs were increasing in size and abundance. The Lake Dixie deposits on Dr. Johnson's farm, where this museum is now built, are part of that early Jurassic Monave formation. So here you can see all these beautiful little ripples that are formed probably from the wind blowing in off the edge of the lake and they're forming right along the margin of the shoreline. So this, what you're seeing here, is the shoreline of the lake and the water level probably dropped a little bit. So this would have still been nice and wet as this dinosaur walked and stepped in. So here's the middle toe, the outside toes. And here you can see how the ripples have been deformed from the weight of the animal stepping into the soft squishy mud. While tracks are abundant, dinosaur bones from the early Jurassic period are extremely rare. So the rock record here in St. George has given us a unique window into what was going on during this important time period. And the tracks here show us that early dinosaurs were by far the most abundant land animals in this ecology. One of the more common tracks we have here are these small meat-eating dinosaur tracks which go by the name of Grawlator. Now Grawlator is not the name of a dinosaur, it's the name of a dinosaur track type. Paleontologists give fossil tracks a separate name from fossil skeletons because finding tracks along with a skeleton is extremely rare and many different kinds of dinosaurs left pretty similar three-toed footprints. One thing that paleontologists can do is we can look at the lengths of the toes, the configuration of the toes, and the shapes of the claws and compare those to the bones of dinosaurs that are known from the same time period and use that to help narrow down which kind of dinosaurs may have been the culprits that made these tracks. These growlitter tracks were left by small theropod dinosaurs. Theropods are the group of dinosaurs that eventually gave rise to famous giants like Tyrannosaurus rex and also all modern birds. Despite this mind-boggling diversity, most theropods, including many modern birds, still walk around on three big toes. These growlitter tracks were most likely made by a small theropod dinosaur similar to this Megapnosaurus, whose bones have been found in the slightly younger Cayenta formation. While growlitter tracks are by far the most abundant dinosaur tracks at this site, there are larger theropod tracks here as well. This track type is called Eubrontes, and it was left by the apex predator in this ecology. Eubrontes tracks have been found all over the early Jurassic rocks of North America, but one of the things making this site so important is that it preserves both tracks and bones. We had a little breakthrough when we discovered this little vertebra, this backbone from a juvenile meat-eating dinosaur, which is very similar to the backbones of Dilophosaurus. Dilophosaurus is the earliest large predatory dinosaur yet found in North America which makes it really important to our understanding of how small dinosaurs evolved into giants. So far, only a few bones and teeth have been found here in St. George, but more complete skeletons of Dilophosaurus have been found in the slightly younger Cayenta Formation in Arizona, 
Those more complete skeletons show us that Dilophosaurus was a powerful predator, growing up to around 20 feet long. But this predator was unlike any before it, in part because it was truly bizarre looking, even by dinosaur standards. The bones of the air-filled sinuses in Dilophosaurus' snout grew up to form two hollow crests on top of its head. Believe it or not, these hollow bony crests are actually quite similar to those found in some modern birds, such as cassowaries and hornbills. But bird-like air-filled bones didn't stop with the crests on Dilophosaurus's head. So one of the unusual features of this vertebra, of this backbone, is that it has a bunch of very thin little sheets of bone all over the place surrounding these little hollow spaces. And what these hollow spaces were, they were filled with actual air sacs in the life of the living animal, very similar to what you see in modern day birds. This adaptation actually lightens the bones, which enabled Dilophosaurus and other large theropod dinosaurs to become giants, while enabling these smaller living theropods to become light enough to take flight. But what were these strange predatory dinosaurs doing along the shoreline of Lake Dixie? The reason tracks are so important is because they actually record the behavior and movements of these animals in the environment where they actually lived. And the tracks at this site reveal surprising behaviors that nobody would have guessed based on bones alone. So what we have here is a collection of dinosaur swim tracks. These are made by small meat eaters that are buoyed up in the water. And as they're kicking their feet, their toes strike the muddy bottom, leaving these parallel sets of three scrape marks. Here at the Dinosaur Discovery Site at Johnson Farm, we have the world's largest and best preserved collection of dinosaur swim tracks. And these tracks ended all controversy on whether or not dinosaurs actually swam. And in a few cases, the scratch marks left by swimming become footprints of animals walking up the muddy banks, and in one case, sitting down on the shoreline to rest. Here is the circular depression, which is caused by the pelvis and the hips touching down, called the ischial callosity, so basically a dinosaur butt print. And then here we have the metatarsal impressions, so the left and the right feet side by side as the animal sat back on its heels. So here we can see curved marks right here. These are caused by the hands as the animal crouched. And what we can see is that the hands were turned inward. For the longest time, a lot of paleontologists reconstructed meat-eating dinosaurs with their palms down. And these animals couldn't do that based on what we know of the bones. And this is the first trace that actually shows hand impressions with a meat-eating dinosaur trace. And it shows that the hands are in fact turned inward. But tracks aren't the only things preserved here. And the other fossils found here suggest what these predatory animals might have been swimming after in the water. All right, what we have here is a meat-eating dinosaur tooth, a theropod dinosaur tooth that was found here at the site. What's unusual about this tooth is that most meat-eating dinosaur teeth have little serrations like a steak knife going down the edges. This one is lacking those. Instead, it has these little blank patches where those serrations should be. This indicates that the serrations have been worn off of this tooth while the dinosaur was still alive. Uh, and that suggests it was eating something very rough, probably fish that were very heavily armored, such as the ones that lived in Lake Dixie 200 million years ago at this site. Many of the tracks here are preserved as natural casts. Natural casts are formed when a layer of mud or sand flows into a footprint and fills it up. Millions of years later, when the two layers of stone are separated, sometimes they separate so perfectly that the three-dimensional form of the animal's foot can be seen in the natural cast. Further adding to the bird-like character of these animals is the fact that some of these tracks also preserve detailed impressions of dinosaur skin, which looks just like the scaly skin on the feet of modern birds. The reason why we have such great preservation at this site is because of the high clay content that the animals stepped in. So perfect for preserving skin impressions and real nice details and footprints. The museum you're about to explore is a portal into an ancient world where forests, rivers, and sand dunes interacted with a vast system of lakes and recorded in their mud and sand the bones and behaviors of the first large predatory dinosaurs, hunting, swimming, and displaying bird-like adaptations millions of years before the first birds had even evolved. Welcome to the strange world 
of the early Jurassic.